Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 17 of my Algebra Video Tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to focus on radical expressions. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so what exactly is a radical expression? Well, this is a radical expression. So we have square. We have, let's say, we're trying to find the value that when multiplied by itself, four times is equal to six. Well, of course, this is going to be equal to two. But what are all of these individual parts called? Well, this part up here is called the index. This part right here is called the radical. And this part right here is called the rad a canned. All right. So there you go, and that is a radical expression. So whenever you're working with radical expressions, most people know the square of values, the main values 1 through 12, but it's also kind of important to memorize at least the cubes for the values 2 through 6. It's kind of useful in many, many situations, so just something to understand. And I have no idea why I have an 8 here. This should be 216. Okay, so there we go. And now let's talk about simplifying radical expressions. Well, we can, of course, start off with simple things, such as let's get the square root of 36, which, of course, is 6. And then we could get the square root of 49, which is, of course, 7. But when there is no solution... What you need to do instead is find the greatest factor that is a perfect square. So, for example, if we tried to find the square of 18, what we would do is we would go and find a value that we could go and square. So we could have 9 times 2, and 2, of course, is a prime value. And what that would give us as a result would be 3, 2 squared. All right, so let's go and do a couple more of these. Let's say you have the cube root of 81. Well, we could break that down into the cube root of 27 times 3. 3 again being a prime value, which would give us a value of 3 and the cube root of 3. But let's go and also do this with terms. So, for example, if we had the cube root of x to the power of 6, what we could do in this situation is convert that into x squared to the power of 3. And that would give us a value of x squared. Let's get even more complicated. Let's say we are trying to simplify this big giant thing. So we'll do the cube root, and we'll have x to the 15th, and y to the 5th, and z to the 6th. Really complicated stuff. Well, what we can do with this is we can go and take the individual parts. So let's say we take x to the 15th. Well, we can come in and say 3, or divide 15 by 3 and get a value of 5. And then for y to the fifth, we could go and get 5 and divide it by 1. And we could get 7 to the sixth and take 6 and divide it by 3 to get a value of 2. And whenever we do that, we can take this information and say that this is going to be equal to third x to the fifth to the third times y to the first to the third times y squared and then 7 squared to the third and I think you can see where these values are coming from this 5 right here is that 5 right there this 1 right there is that 1 right there this 2 right here is this 2 right there. 
And then this right here would be our remainder of this division right there. And then if we further simplify this, we can come out with a final answer of x to the fifth y z squared and then the cube root of what remains which is going to be y squared all right so there is simplifying everly more complicated radical expressions why don't i go and do another one so let's say we have the square of 20 x to the power of 9 and y to the power of 3 well this time we can take our 20 and convert that into 2 squared times 5 so this is a product with a perfect square we can take our x 9 and go and divide 9 by 2 to get a value of 4 with a remainder this time of 1 and we can get y to the third and take 3 and divide it by 2 to get a value of 1 and a remainder once again of 1 we can then convert this guy up here into the square of 2 to the power of 2 times 5 times x to the power of 4 to the power of 2 times x1 there's your remainder times y whoops like this and this is to the power of 1 squared and here is your remainder again and if we go and further simplify that we end up with 2 x to the fourth y with the square of all that remains which is going to be 5 x and y all right so there's a whole bunch of ways to simplify radical expressions and up next i want to talk about rational exponents now let's take an example with x a over b b is going to be the index of the radical and a is going to represent the exponent of the radicand or the power to which the expression can be raised so for example if we had 9 3 over 2 this would be equal to the square which comes from the denominator and then we'd have 9 here and then we take 3 from the numerator which would be equal to 3 to the power of 3 which would be equal to 27. let's go and do another one let's say we had 64 to the power of one third well that would be exactly the same as getting the cube root of 64 to the power of 1 which of course is going to be equal to 4 Let's take it up another notch let's say we have 20 x to the ninth y to the third to the power of one half well that is going to be equal to the square of 20 x to the ninth y to the third and then we can go and do what we did before so we'll take 20 and simplify each of these individually so 2 squared times 5 so same as 4 times 5 we'll have x to the ninth and we can take 9 and divide it by 2 to get a value of 4 with a remainder of 1 and then we can have y to the power of 3 and take 3 and divide it by 2 to get a value of 1 and a remainder of 1. So in this situation, this would then simplify. I'm going to put it up here. Let's go and get a whole bunch of space. This is going to simplify to 2 squared times 5 for our remainder. And then x to the fourth squared times the remainder. 
times y to the power of 1 squared with our remainder. And of course, basically we take out everything that's squared and leave everything that is a remainder back inside. So we'll say this is equal to 2x to the power of 4y and the square of 5x and y. So there is an example of how we can work with radical expressions. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to talk about radical operations and a whole lot more. So like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.